In this lecture, we will talk about graphs, and I will give a few examples of situations or scenarios where graphs are used to model the data. So, we are we in this lecture we'll talk about two different types of graphs. One is undirected, and the other is directed graphs. What is an undirected graph? An undirected graph is a pair v and e. The, where V is a set of nodes and E is a set of edges where every edge connects between two nodes, two distinct nodes. Okay, So what we are saying here, V is a non-empty set of nodes. So we, can, we, don't, we are not interested in graphs that have no nodes in them. And the notation there that E is a subset or equal to A such that A is in the power set of V and the size of A is 2 basically says that every edge in E is a set that has two elements in it where these two elements are nodes okay and so for example the following is a graph okay so this is this is graph on four nodes and suppose i have these edges in it okay so v in this case is the set that contains the names of the four nodes E is the set of edges where every edge is a set of two nodes that, that have an, an, an edge between them. So the set that has one and two is an edge because we have an edge between one and two here. The set two and three is an edge. Three and four is an edge. And two and four is an edge. And these are the only edges here. Okay, so this is an example of an undirected graph. Undirected here corresponds to or pertains to the edges. There is no direction to the edge. This is why when I write, for example, 1, 2 here, I don't need to write 2, 1. This is a set, and set doesn't have an order. All this is saying is that there is an edge between 1 and 2. It doesn't say from 1 to 2 or from 2 to 1. It says between 1 and 2. So... This is an example of an undirected graph, and to describe it, we can usually draw it, where we draw circles, for example, for the nodes, and we put a line between two circles if there is an edge between these two nodes. In the case of directed graph, now we have directions on the edges themselves. So we, we, we talk about we have an edge from 1 to 2, or an edge from 2 to 3, but no edge from 3 to 2, and so on. So in, in the case of directed graphs, imagine, think about the case of traffic on the roads, right? So some of the roads, for example, are one way. You can go from, from one intersection to the other just in one direction. Some roads have, have, you can travel in both directions, and we will have two edges in both directions. So directed graphs are used, for example, to model cases like road maps and so on. In the case of directed graph, we still have an unempty set of nodes. But now the edges, every edge is not a set of two elements. It's a pair of two elements because a pair has a direction in it or an order in it. So when we write, when I write something, when I write something like U, V, something like this, there is an order. U comes before V. So this corresponds to an edge from node U to node V, something like this. Okay. And if when I write in the case of undirected graph, if I write U and V like this, then I have the nodes U and V, and there is a line between them. There's no arrow on it. There's no direction. So in the case of, of directed graph, for example, I can have the following directed graph. One, two, three, four, five. Something like this. So in this case here, we have the edges are and let's do this, for example, here. The edges, the nodes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the edges are, we have an edge from 1 to 2. We have an edge from 1 to 2. We have an edge from 2 to 1. We have an edge from 3 to 1. We have an edge from 3 to 5. And we have an edge from 5 to 4. And these are all the edges in this graph okay so again in the case of directed graph we we basically still have an unempty set of nodes and when we talk about the edges every edge is a pair so that we have the edge going from the first element in that pair to the second element in that pair 
Why do we care about graphs? As I had said, uh, I had said that graphs are ubiquitous in computer science. They are a very powerful tool to model all sorts of data and, and relationships. And one of these examples, for, you know, we use graphs to model computer networks, for example. So here, what would be the nodes? What would be the, the edges? For example, one example is the nodes can be the data centers, for example. And edges are connections or links or links between data centers, okay? between data centers. So if I represent the data center by the city in which it is, so for example, we have a data center, let's say in Houston, I have a data center in Dallas, let's say, I can have a data center in New York, I have a data center in, in Seattle, and so on. Then I can then put lines between the data centers that have connection or link between them. So let's say Houston and Dallas are connected, Dallas to New York and Seattle to New York. For example, so this will be a graph where the nodes correspond to the to the data centers or the cities in which we have the data centers, and then we have an edge between two nodes if they are if the data centers bit of the the corresponding nodes are linked. Another example here, for example, is biological networks, and there are lots of different types of biological networks. One example of biological network is the proteins within a cell. Okay, so when you look at, uh, if, if, if you inspect the cell in your body, you will know that inside the cell, there are proteins that are produced continuously. And these proteins do a function, a certain function. And that these proteins interact with each other. So suppose I have five proteins, I'm focusing on five proteins, protein one, protein two, protein three, and protein four, and protein five. So for example, protein one and protein two can interact, okay, activating each other or stuff like that. Protein two and protein three interact. Protein one and protein three interact. Protein five and protein four interact. But four, neither four or five interact with one, two or three, for example. So this is a graph representation of the biological network or part of the biological network inside the cell where the nodes are proteins and there's an edge between two nodes if these proteins interact. Another example is power network or sometimes called electrical grid or electric grid. So in, in a power network, for example, we can have the nodes to correspond to generating stations. So for example, I can have generating stations. So the nodes would be generating stations. This is one type of node or, or nodes. So these will be the, the stations that produce the electric power. And we will have a node for every uh, generating station, let's say, in the country or in the state and so on. Then we have some substations there. We have electrical substations, for example. And these are the ones that basically they step the electrical voltage up for transmission or sometimes down for distribution. So they regulate the voltage for transmission or for distribution to the customers, for example. And you know, if we have, let's say, 100 generating stations, we will have 100 nodes. If we have 500 electrical substations, we will have 500 additional nodes and so on. And of course, we have, we have the, the customers, right? So this, let's say, this can be the homes, they can be the businesses and so on that are connected to the, to the uh, electrical substations, for example. And you know, this could be, so these are the nodes here. We have node one, node two, node three, node four. And we, again, we can have lots of nodes for customers. And then we have the, we have the network or the graph showing the connections among these. And these connections actually could be, for example, corresponding to the physical, uh, you know, transmission lines that connect these, these uh, uh, you know, generating stations. They can be the distribution lines that connect, you know, all the way to individual customers like homes and businesses and so on. So in this case, the nodes correspond again to generating stations, to customer homes, businesses and so on. And we have line between or edges between two nodes. If there is a connection there that we have electricity passing from one of these nodes to another. Road networks, this is one of the most maybe commonly thought about examples of graphs. So when you are doing, when you use map, a map uh, maps application 
on your phone or in your computer to look for a certain place or a certain restaurant and directions and so on. Underlying, you know, under the hood, we have a graph representation of the city or the country and, and so on. So you can think about it as the nodes here in, the, in, such, a, in such a graph will be the intersections in the city. Okay, so you have intersections and intersection one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So intersection one and two are connected by a road. One and three are connected by a road. Two and three are connected by a road. Three to four, for example, four to five, five to six. And again, in this case, for example, the, the, the direction should have directions. For example, the road between one and two, you can travel in both directions. So we can add these two edges. In the case of two and three, let's say it's, it's by you know, one direction. Between one and three, it's in both directions and so on. Three and four, just one direction. Four and five, one direction. Five and six, one direction. And we can go from six to three and so on. Okay. So this is an example of a road network where the nodes are intersections or cities or and, and so on. And uh, we have an edge between two nodes if there is a road between them. Another very big example these days is the notion of social networks. So, for example, if we think about Facebook, let's say, then we have a node per user. So these are the different users. And then we have edges between nodes if this if these users, for example, are connected or they like each other and so on, on on Facebook, or if they are connected, let's say if you can have a graph representation of the LinkedIn network where the nodes also are the users and there's an edge between two nodes if the users are connected and so on. And there are many, many more uh, gr uh, graphs uh, that represent all sorts of scenarios and and situations that we we encounter in real life and in real applications. The last thing I want to say here is that when I'm talking about graphs here, there are two things that I will not allow. One of them is that when I'm talking about undirected graphs, I will not allow more than one edge between the same two nodes. Okay, So we will have only one edge between two nodes. So any two nodes can be either connected by an edge or not connected at all. They cannot have more than one edge. Okay, I'm not going to allow this in all the lectures I'm going to be covering on graphs. The other thing, I will not allow an edge between a node and itself. Okay, so this is we call it self loop. I will not allow this. Okay, so no edge connects the, ed the, the node to itself. This is in the case of directed, of undirected graph. In the case of, of directed graph, I will not allow two edges in the same direction, two or more direction edges in the same direction. Please keep in mind that this scenario is allowed because these are two edges in different directions. So this is fine. But I don't allow two edges in the same direction. And last thing is I don't want to allow also self-loop in the indirected graph. So something like this, I will not allow it. Okay? So these are just restrictions that I will enforce or I will assume on graphs when I am talking about graphs and their properties.